Greetings and salutations, friends. It's time for the second episode of Let's Play Dragon View. If you guys remember in the last episode, we had a lot of plot, de plot development stuff, if I can talk right tonight, where we met uh, the various characters in the game and uh, watched this guy's girlfriend get kidnapped by Struggle Snuggles the Wizard. And right now I'm just heading over to uh, the star teleporter thing. I think it's called a warp star, which the monk mentioned earlier. You have to step on them to activate them. And once they're active, you can teleport. But you need two stars active or something. I don't know. We'll figure that shit out later on. Of course, we're going to the first dungeon in the game. There was a dungeon earlier. I guess you could call it a dungeon. It was really just kind of like three rooms, so I don't I don't count that so much. Um, and here's a farm. Like, there's some cool stuff in this game. Some nice little touches. I like these farms. I don't know what they're growing in there. Is that are those onions? I guess they eat a lot of onions in this world. And one of the nice touches about this cave is. Um, you have to look for it. Oh, well, it just happened. Sometimes the lanterns shake. And it seems to happen if you, like, swing your sword at them or you open a door or something. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, so you, I swung the sword and it kind of hit it. It's also strange that those gems just kind of float down very slowly instead of falling. And here we got the armor energy. You get upgrades, I presume, in dungeons mostly. And uh, we have a little bit more defensive power, and we have this cool silver armor. These guys, I should have used the Huza, or Huaza, or I don't know, the, the boomerang fucking thing to fight them. I didn't. I used the sword. Uh, it's a little easier to fight them with the boomerang. And, uh, yeah, a lot of scorpions and shit. And moths. I don't like the moths at all. They're, <laughs> they're more annoying than the scorpions. Um, we'll fight worse moths later on. Let me get a hit point potion. Now, this dungeon is a little tricky because you actually have to double back. You have to get that key from the box. And then you have to look for kind of, it's not really hidden or anything, it's in plain sight, but you do have to look for a door that isn't like totally apparent, and it's right there. But that that did trip me up for a second, it was like, where's the dynamite? I got to the end of the dungeon. But no, no, the dungeon isn't over yet. Unfortunately, I'm finding health in here, which I need. I think I probably could have done well to get, like, to maybe level 5. Probably would have helped. Now, I finally wise up and use the Huaza. I think that's how it's pronounced. It might be Huaza. I'm going to have to Google that shit. See what it actually says. Google Translate. I'm sure it's totally trustworthy and unbiased. Um, you can actually hit the moths with this thing, as you see. Which is cool. Like, there's a lot of things you can't hit. Now, this is my third take on this video. Well, actually, it's my second. Um, you know, here we have the boss. The first time I did this, when I was working on the actual written walkthrough, I did fine against the boss. I just, you know, I just fucking killed it. The second time when I was doing the video, it like pinned me against the wall and, and just raped me to death. And, you know, this thing does look kind of rapey, so... It wasn't pleasant. It wasn't a fun time. But if you just kind of move out of the way and hit it with the, uh, with the waza and just jump, you're fine. You can't do shit. Pretty horrible creature. It even has a name, as we'll soon learn. And you get a whole lot of life when it dies. I wish it was money. Like, I'd rather have the money. 
but yeah, I guess beggars can't be choosers. At least this isn't like Ninja Gaiden for the Xbox where like you kill a boss and it explodes and kills you. Let me get 200 Jade. Although I think those are just certain ninjas that did that. And we get dynamite. So that's what we came here for. We're gonna go get our bombs. So we can go through Gallus Pass. And uh, get to Kazdra. I like those headless spearmen. I guess they're using a pole arm, but whatever the fuck they are, I like them. Unfortunately, they do kind of make you walk back through the dungeon. I took the time to kill stuff in here because I figured I could use the experience. Well, the, the experience in this game, like the experience curve, it's pretty steep. Like, I've noticed, um... You gain a couple levels and suddenly the uh, the amount of experience you're getting from these enemies is nothing. So you kind of want to move on. The nice thing is this game's not really very grindy. I think I spent like 15 minutes behind the scenes getting to like level 3 or something. If I even did that, I might, have, I might not have done that even. I'm not sure. I don't quite remember, but... It, it really doesn't make you grind a whole lot, at least not yet, and I hope it stays like that because that's something I like. I don't, I don't like having to spend hours trying to gain a level. Chris, we have this, I don't know, I don't really like this song a whole lot, but the next song for the world map I, I do like. But I, I kind of like this song, it's hard to explain. It's. It's just one of those things, I guess. So yeah, we're gonna go visit Tyrone in his shop here, but first we get a cutscene. Meanwhile, back at the storehouse, <laughs> we have this guy who clanks when he walks. Argos, the demon, knight call, the demon knight calls out. Pyrsha has been destroyed. So yeah, the boss's name's Pyrsha, if you didn't guess. Out of nowhere, Argos flickers into existence. Who in this realm could destroy Pyrsha in her very lair? The demon knight bows low and replies. If it pleases you, my lord, we knew already that the entrance into the underworld was not in this place. Pyrsha was not needed any longer. I gotta, I gotta think of a demon voice, like he looks kind of mischievous. Argos glowers at his subordinate. I know that fool. But if one exists that could defeat Pyrsha, we should be wary. Go to the ice fields, reinforce our position there. The Kier Island Temple should provide a fine stronghold. Yes, sir, the knight barks out. And where can I find you later, master? I shall travel south, southeast, in search of the entrance. He got me with that. Argos answers. I sense powerful evil emanating from there. Inform the others to search as they were instructed. As you wish, my lord, says the demon. We will succeed. As Argos vanishes. Pause. Very long pause there. Furious, the demon knight growls. Grrr. I cringe to call a human master and my lord. Soon demons will rise from the underworld to crush all humans. Yes, crush all humans. And I think our beloved master will suffer most of all. Clank, 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 clank. 
Okay, so that was that was interesting. The, the story is kind of going in a direction I wasn't quite expecting. I thought Argos is just going to sit in his fortress and wait for Alex to come kill him. But apparently there's a little bit more going on. And here we have Tyrone. Make my bomb, Tyrone. Tyrone greets you heartily. Fantastic, you did it. And you brought more than enough. At last, that woman will let me out of the house. <laughs> his, his woman won't let him out of the house, huh? Please tell the shopkeeper I'll bring some bombs to her later. That's why he has that black eye, I guess. Give me some time to make your bombs. Why don't you go purchase some equipment while you're waiting? So, I guess the game wanted players to use the shop. Or at least, like, kind of learn. So he sends us to the shop. So when you tell her what happened, she looks abashed. So Tyrone really was out of dynamite. So Tyrone's really on crack again. I feel like a fool. I must apologize to him and to you, Alex. I'm sorry I doubt you. Perhaps this map will make up for it. So apparently she's a shopkeeper. That's why she wants bombs. It will be useful to you when you cross Gallus Pass. See you in Kazdra. And, uh, yeah, so that will come in handy very soon. <laughs> Here we have this crazy-ass bitch. The, the way she shakes her head is it's very, very disturbing. I hear Tyrone is back in business. Thanks to you, his bombs always sell well here and I don't know about periods I don't know what they do that's why I just kept talking come again hero she calls just starts shooting hearts everywhere I don't know she's she's uh she's a little weird a little, a little obsessive maybe I don't I don't really understand why. I mean, Alex is some guy who hangs out with a bunch of dudes in, like, a, a two-building town. Your bombs are finished. I made ten. Tyrone points at the table in the corner of the room. It also kind of looks like he's jerking off. They're over there. You have to excuse me now. I have other orders to finish. Just, you know, code for masturbation, I guess. Your bombs, oh, he's saying the same shit. I had some trouble getting these bombs. I, I don't know, all those, all the stupid retarded shit that I was trying to avoid doing in the video, I didn't do it when I was working on the walkthrough. And I played this section before, you know, while I was doing that. But when I went to record it, like, I, I just kept fucking up. Like, I don't know. That's me, though. I'm an idiot. So we're going to go to Gallus Pass. Um, also, I am playing this on a different emulator now. I know I was, I was talking up Beast Nest and saying how great it was. Well, I noticed that there were like these weird lines across the screen in certain battles because it wasn't doing, it was in this type of battle actually. It wasn't doing like the, the foreground layer properly for some reason. I'm going to have to look into that and see why. It might be a compatibility thing. It might just be the settings on the emulator. But um, I did notice there was that problem. So I thought, well, I guess I'll try it on SNES 9X. And, you know, lo and behold, it actually plays the game properly. Uh, that's that's emulation for you. I, I do understand why some people are uh, almost fanatical about real hardware because yeah, it is more accurate and you know, well, it is 100% accurate. <laughs> it's the actual thing. But um, you know, there there is something to be said for emulation, especially when you know. Eventually, all the Super Nintendo, Super Nintendos in the world crap out, and <laughs> none of them work. I guess this is the only way anyone will be able to play this stuff.
Now, um, these trees have that fruit that that little girl was talking about. And of course, they're just plain old apples. <laughs> There's nothing special about them. You may also notice I bypassed that cave um, or just ignored it. I don't think bypassed. Anyway, um, you can't really do much in there. And uh, the thing that we want that's in that cave, we'll be able to get it in a little bit. Like, I'll, I'll kind of explain it when we get there. Now, these pink moth fuckers, they actually give a lot of experience. And this is a good place to grind if you are playing this game. And now we're going to see the most disappointing bomb on Earth. Like, I was expecting, like, this big-ass Legend of Zelda bomb. But... But that says just tiny bomb in a tiny explosion. Very disappointing. But you can actually hurt enemies with those things. You kind of got to set them up a little bit, but they deal a lot of damage. If you, you might have seen on the uh, stat screen, the attack power is 66 for that bomb. I think like I have like maybe, maybe like 28. 30 attack power with the sword. So that's pretty damn good. So there's more of this that fruit in that tree over there. I'm going to get it in a second. Oh, well, I accidentally got it. And this is why I hate them all. They're, they're real assholes. Of course, now, you know, all this cursing, I mean, I should stop. YouTube will somehow like throttle my videos even more. The the two people on YouTube that that watch my uploads won't get notified because I said a bad word. I'm not going to complain about all that, but that's that is YouTube for you. Now, uh, this cave is where we will find uh, the thing we wanted, which is another heart container. You got the HP capacity. That's also a switch there that creates a shortcut. I don't know if there's really any point to it, but I guess. I guess there's a point. I'm kind of curious about how much those hit point container things actually increase your hit points. I'm going to have to look into that. Next time I get one, I'll like pause the game and look at my actual HP. Now we're on our way to Kazra. This is a song that I actually like. It's a lot, lot better. I don't know, it's a little peppier. It's got a little, a little pep in its step. Now, as I was saying, like, I I thought that was really strange, so I had to check it out. It's like the lake is under the road. I don't, I don't know. But, um, yeah, as I was saying, like, all the, like, mistakes that I was trying to avoid by playing through this stuff before doing the video, like, I, I did them all. Like, we'll, we'll see, I'm going to actually walk past Kazdra somehow. Like, somehow I miss it. Even though I knew the direction it was in. And I, I had to, like, check my map and stuff and double back. I, I just don't know how I managed it. But we did find the star. So, you know, there's that. That's, that's a good thing. I don't know how to actually use it, though. And that's another thing about this game. You have to actually select the area map to, to, to view it. Like, that threw me off a little bit because it just doesn't come up. <laughs> Walk into a tree. Alex is not known for his intellect. Yeah, I might end up just cutting this out, because it's kind of boring. But there, I finally locate Kazdra. 
And I have to like circle around it to get to it. And that was very awkward. There's something about this um this map style, this this first person thing. They didn't they didn't get the uh it's just not centered properly. It's hard to explain, so like moving around's kind of weird. Especially if you turn, because it's like you're not turning on a tight axis. The man greets you warmly. Welcome to Kazdra. Nice little town, isn't it? Among the peaks lies Dragon Temple. Many wise men reside in that temple. Among them, Giza is the youngest. Some say that he's the brightest young man to ever do temple stuff, I guess. I think ever to join the temple. Yeah, so it's a nice little house you have here. Rumors say that the demons have seized the Kier Temple, she blurts out excitedly. I have a hard time believing that, but what if it's true? We'll talk to this old bastard here. The old man is shaking furiously. I hope he doesn't have a poem. Listen, something terrible must have happened. A few days ago, I saw demons exit the front gates of Kier Temple. They seem to be unhindered by the sacred place. Maybe they're sacred demons. Is it possible they have seized the temple? Uh, no. The girl relates a very sad tale to you. Years ago, a brother and sister lived here, together, committing incest. They were inseparable. One day, the sister fell very ill. Although her brother pleaded to the gods for her recovery, she grew steadily worse until she died of her unknown ailment. It was actually just syphilis. Her brother was left forlorn and grieved deeply of her death. Shortly afterwards, he disappeared, never to be seen again. Now, all that remains of them is a lonely grave on the far side of town. Where could he have gone? Don't know. I guess maybe that will be, uh, important somehow. Are you Alex? The woman asks. No, no I'm not. The old lady who runs the shop spoke of your great deeds. But going to a storehouse and picking up dynamite. Delighted, the woman inquires. You, hear, you hail from Rhesus. My daughter will be ecstatic. Yeah, ecstatic. She believes a prince from Rhesus will arrive and sweep her off her feet. Great. Oh, we have her again. The woman from Tyrone's house sits behind the counter. Hello, warrior. I appreciate your help and who ya? What? Free goods? Ah, huh, you're quite a joker. But please feel free to buy anything you fancy. Alright. Give me one jade each for those fruit. One jade, my god. Yeah, we'll keep the fruit. They actually come in handy later on from what I've been reading, so we'll just keep them. Come again, she calls to you. I'll be here. That song was very annoying, that shop song. I don't know, that tapping. Hey, hero. The girl is on the verge of tears. My father is a hunter. He sometimes stays out hunting for days at a time. He says he hates me, doesn't want to see me, so I wait at home all alone for him. Sometimes I get so scared and lonely, I just cry. I got so lonely, I hid my father's bow in the north cave so he can't go hunting. Oops, me and my big mouth. Please don't tell my father. <laughs> so her, her father's probably feeding them by hunting and she's just like hiding his livelihood the man turns to you and says you should speak with rodister perhaps he can help you on your quest search for him by the lake in the east he lives alone 
in a cave near that lake. Use this map to find him. It's of no use to me. Um, Rodister. I guess that's easy enough to say. I don't think I need to give him a special name. He's probably not going to be in the game much anyway. We have the, uh, sh the, uh, the cloaked merchant. Psst. Warrior, the shady merchant whispers out, peering left and right. Want to buy something you can't get anywhere else? Where really, you inquire, how much? Only 300 jade. Of course, we got another hit point container thing. It sounds like he's selling drugs or like whores or something, but no. It's just hit point containers, unless those are drugs in this world. You got the hit point capacity. It looks like we're, we're like level 6 and it looks like we're almost at like half HP. That's interesting. I wonder if the amount we get like per level will decrease as we level up. Get like diminishing returns. Do not attempt to cross the mountains to reach Kier Temple. They are too steep, and you would surely perish. And the building next door lies the magic path to Kier Temple. If you can gain permission to use it, you will be there in no time. Something tells me we won't get permission. The old warrior begins speaking softly. Ah, oh, when I was young, I was a warrior much like yourself. I fought great battles throughout the world, but one terrible place remains most vivid in my memory. West of here, there is a cave of fire. In my foolhardy youth, I entered that cave on a fool's rager. To this day, the memory of that awful cavern haunts me in my sleep. Yeah, I've been in some awful caverns too, but that's... That's another story. The girl is daydreaming. Okay. One day my prince will come and carry me away. I hope he hurries. Wait! You came from Reese's, didn't you? She gasps. You must be my prince. Ugh. Go away. Horrible, horrible children. You know, you don't often see children in games from this era. That's interesting. There's a lot of, like... I don't know, this game's different in a lot of ways. The magic pathway to Care Temple is in the back room, says the old guardian. However, a few days ago, a great fortress of ice appeared in front of the temple. Now an evil presence blocks the magic path, and great pillars of ice fill the temple gates. If only we could melt that confounded ice. Then we can learn what happened within the temple. Well, and you're just going to still stand in front of the door, right? Okay. All right, jerk. Big jerk head. The inscription reads, Here lies my beloved sister. Taken from me by a wicked blight that the gods would not cure. Gods frown on incest, my friend. Ooh, it got dark. You hear a noise. Sob. Sounds like someone crying. How strange. It is actually rather strange. Are you sure she just didn't, like, fall down that well over there and has been trapped in there for, like, 20 years? The man hardly notices you. Where's that bow? He mutters to himself. I can't wait for the life of me. I can't for the life of me remember where I put it. Well, I... Fuck that up. And there's... That's strange. There's an empty house. There's probably, like, an NPC in there that got edited out of the, uh... The American version. It's too edgy for Super Nintendo. Probably didn't even say anything about strange. So, that's about it for this episode. I'm gonna wrap it up here. I hope you guys enjoyed the little bit of action we got. Of course, this guy's just going to tell us some bullshit about warp stars that we already know. 
But uh, yeah, as I was saying, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm enjoying this game. It's, it's shaping up to be promising. I'm, I don't want to say I have high hopes for it. I have medium hopes for this game. Like, I, I, I have a feeling it might be mostly good. So, thank you so much for watching, everyone. As always, I will be back with more. And until next time, good luck and happy gaming.